I'm Rob Kellogg and today we're going to talk about cold weather safety. Now that's the uh, winter time has really hit us here uh, in the Midwest. Uh, I know the East Coast and West Coast are, are getting their fair share as well. But don't forget about the South. You know, they still have some issues that need to address. And even Texas gets uh, snow and ice, uh, especially in the harsh times of winter. So we have to prepare for that if we're not already in it. So without further ado, cold weather safety. And one of the things we want to talk about today is how do I know if I'm overexposed? Well, kind of a silly question. We've all been exposed to it. And we all have those symptoms, but let's remind ourselves that's a progression of going from hypothermia and into uh, I can't even think of the term off the top of my head. I'll get it. Uh, hypothermia is the one thing we want to worry about because that is going to start us on to bigger and better things, uh, which is going to cause a whole lot more damage. So hypothermia in particular, a first indicator of hypothermia is shivering. You start to get that, whew, things are really not as comfortable as they should be, and your body shivers because its core temperature is starting to diminish below its comfort level. Now, we all walk around at 98.6 on average, a little lower, a little higher, depends on who we are. But when we get to the point where our core, personally our core, is below that comfort level, we're going to get that initial shiver to try to, to get warmth generated from internal. Now, if we can't get that warmth generated with that shiver, we're going to continue to shiver. And at a point where it will be uncontrollable because your body has really lost a lot of heat. It's gone away from its center and it is really trying to generate some stuff to get things flowing again. So your body's starting to slow down. Your metabolism is starting to slow down. And this can be hazardous, especially for a circulatory system. So if you have a circulatory issue to begin with, this is only going to exasperate that and make it tougher. So shivering is your first indicator. Your next indicator is going to be tingling and numbness. And that's something that your body's telling you from extremities, like your nose, your lips, your ears. Um, your fingertips, your toes if they're exposed, uh, eyebrows is another uh, indicator as well. These don't get the proper circulation, they're overexposed to the environment and the body just can't get enough warm blood into that area fast enough to maintain its comfort level. So we're going to start seeing that indicator as well. Once you get to that, um, you get into hypothermia, now we're calling it frostbite. There's the term. We're going to start the frostbite process. And the frostbite process is when we start to see, after the numbing has begun, we're going to start to see color changes. And there's two different kind of thoughts and ideas of how you, you take care of yourself once you get to that level. Um, whether you've gotten there and now what you're going to do or to prevent it to going to the next level, if you can, here's something that you can do. So when we start seeing color changes in our tissues, that's and it's numb we're going to have to start taking into consideration once it starts turning an ashen color or even a yellowish orange color this these are indicators of lack of circulation in that area uh, one way you can look to see if there's good indication of blood flow is called capillary refill and you can do it either by squeezing your finger really really hard and it goes from a pink or white back to a pink color now if you've got fingernail polish on there or if you have mud, dirt, something that you just can't look at it, you can do a skin test. And basically you pinch in the webbing between your, your uh, thumb and your forefinger. Give that a good pinch hard. Hold that for about five to six seconds. Let go and you'll see it go from a white back to a colored uh, indicator uh, in my skin. And this is the same no matter what pigment you might have in your skin. Uh, whether you're dark color, your light color, it doesn't matter. All that's going to show an indication of blood flow that it's going to go back to its original color. So if you've got good blood flow, you're on the lower side of that frostbite potential. But if it takes more than two seconds to start to regenerate that, that same color, now you're having a circulatory challenge. And that's one thing you want to get back up to speed. And the best thing to do that is slow warmth. Now slow warmth doesn't mean that we run it underwater. Everybody knows that once you've got that numbing sensation, that's the last thing you want to do is put it under any kind of temperature water because now we've got the needles come out and that's just painful to endure. So slow warmth can either be environmental, get into a warm room, you know, start slowly rubbing your hands together lightly and that's to get that feeling back in your hands. 
get that air flowing through from your breath. Make sure you're in a dry, warm environment when you do that. You don't want to do this outside because now you're breathing water onto your skin and that accelerates the cooling process. So we don't want to do that externally. We want to do that internally in a dry environment. So if this is not working and you want to use your own body parts like your armpits or any other kind of warm item that you can touch without burning yourself, that's helpful. So you want to do that. Now, if the colors go beyond that, you're not able to correct this or you've gotten to the extreme exposure because you're not able to get to a warm environment until you've uh, gotten this ex uh, exposure, um, you want to look at when it starts turning a greenish blue color and even a brown black color. These are extreme frostbite exposures and we want to make sure we take care of them in a different way. We want to make sure that we wrap them in a loose uh, wrapping, whatever that might be, towel, shirt, get it out of the environment, get a kind of a, a seal around it, an air seal or an air buffer. And then we want to get somebody to the hospital who has this immediately because this could be irreversible damage. We don't want to rub it. We don't want to slowly warm it up. We want to get to an emergent help because this is vital to keeping whatever those items were that turned that color we want to keep those so you have a higher propensity of recovery if you get emergent care immediately once you get to this level. So what are some things we want to worry about? When it comes to our activity, we want to look at the environment and how that's going to produce these issues. So we want to have countermeasures accordingly. Now we look here, wet environment or a humid environment. We can have a humid environment in the wintertime in cold, cold uh, conditions. Um, wet snow is a great example of a humid potential environment and a cold, um, cold exterior uh, exposure. This is your worst enemy. When it comes to any kind of moisture on your body and wind or any kind of exposure to the cold, it's going to accelerate that loss of, of uh, heat in your body. So we want to make sure we keep those dry and we want to keep them covered to the best of our ability. If they become saturated uh, with the wind actually will draw out that uh, that heat much much faster and an easy way to, to, to test that is put anything that's hot and put us uh, like a hot cup of coffee put a spoon in it and then put a fan on that spoon you'll watch that coffee get cold really really fast because it's drawing that energy from inside out and that wind does that to your skin as well we want to make sure that our wind temperature or our wind uh, extreme uh, indicators are, are, are regulated as well or made aware, should I say. And that is that the, the higher the wind, temp, uh, wind speed, the faster that extraction from your body is going to occur. We get the wind chill factor. And well, we've heard that before. So your temperature obviously is a major factor. When you start getting below uh, 50 degrees, we start to see hypothermia. That your shivering and numbness start to kick in and then we really don't see a frostbite environment but hypothermia can cause a lot of internal circulatory issues so if you have problems and are susceptible to that it exasperates them so we want to be very mindful once you start getting below the 40 and 30 degree mark that's when temperatures in the core start to get taken out really quick and we want to make sure we counter that with warm dry clothing uh, duration you know, we've all walked outside and go like, <laughs> Code day. I'm going back in and grab one before I go to work. So we don't realize how cold it is or we didn't look beforehand. Our body tells us it's cold. So if it's an instant cool feeling, cold feeling, and you're going to be out for long periods of time, you want to take into consideration that exposure because it won't take long to go for a T-shirt or even a, a, a simple collar shirt. That temperature is going to come right out of you rather quickly. There's really no protection to it. And then protection mechanisms. Well, what are some of the things that we can utilize? Make sure you got good warm clothing. Now, we want something internally, something that's going to touch our skin to whisk away that, uh, that temperature potential, uh, the wetness exposure. So if we're sweating during uh, activities and we want to draw that away and not be near the surface, that's key. We want to use layers. Always use layers when you're going outside, especially to work, because you're going to have different temperatures throughout the day. Could start out with a 20 degree morning, end up with a 55 degree afternoon. You're going to want to have to peel that stuff off instead of having this one big bulky item, which is going to cause you to sweat 
when you get into the higher temperatures, but not quite warm enough for you to take it off. So it makes for a, a difficult environment. So layer up is your best bet when it comes to this. Make sure you got good gloves and boots <clears throat> and hat, whether you've got a stocking cap, um, uh, a pullover, you got a gator that you can pull up. Anything that's going to cover that head, the capillaries up here are going to actually exasperate that loss of temperature rather rapidly. So we want to protect our head, not just with a hard hat. We want to put something underneath to keep that warmth in uh, to the best of your ability. There's a lot of items out there, especially the battery operated ones that cause warming sensations to occur. Uh, those are an option. Um, you can look into thermal uh, underwear. Those are also an option, but again, could be a hindrance. If you start to get into the warmer temperatures, you want to peel that stuff off pretty fast uh, to get to a comfort zone, depending on your activity. So if you stand around and watch and work, like me, safety guy, yeah, we can keep thermals on pretty much all day and have to worry about it. But if I'm doing a shovel work and I'm swinging a hammer or turning a wrench, well, the game just changed. So you have to be adjustable to that. Don't forget, look at your symptoms. Make sure you correct them as quickly as you can because if they progress, they get worse and worse and worse until finally you could lose parts of your body if you don't take care of yourself. And make sure you're prepared for your environments and your countermeasures with what you have available. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, give us a call here at Ultimate Group. We're here to help you. And remember, safety is not a mindset. It's a state of mind. Have a good day.